Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Conversations of the Strange. And I am on the phone with probably one of the big reasons why I'm doing what I'm doing today. I will never forget the impact that his show has had actually on my life on a personal basis. I have met one of my best friends on the whole planet because of his show. And even to this day, uh, my friend Robert Schneck and I, we sit around talking about how much we loved Shadows in the Dark and how great it was. And I am on the phone with the former host of Shadows in the Dark and the former host of Jeremiah Greer Live, the amazing, the one and only Jeremiah Greer. Jeremiah, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing great, and this is awesome. You know, it's been a while since I think I've been on any kind of radio or podcast. And to be honest, I'm actually wearing a Shadows in the Dark T-shirt. How odd is that? Uh, that that is hilarious. My wife, she <laughs> would um, you had sent me one one time, and my wife still wears it so <laughs> I still i wear them all the time and everybody asks me about it like what is that and i usually i wear the one that has the definition on the back right and i'm always have to just turn around like there you go that's what it is <laughs> right right when you did shadows in the dark you had it geared it was it was more or less it was kind of like with that influx of when blog talk radio got really big mm-hmm. and iphones were getting big and people were like oh my gosh there's this thing called podcasts it was the equivalent of being able to re- Record your favorite radio show that has just never that was just never an option that things had um, in the days of VCR there was always that oh it's great I can record this episode of Knight Rider or, <laughs> right. or, or something but I could never record like uh, I could never record Coast to Coast or Art Bell or something, and that's what I would really love to do or or something along right. those lines. And your show was really, really huge with that. Am, am I correct? Like that's Were you starting that to interview like these ghost hunters and uh, uh, people that were UFO hunters and other stuff like that? Yeah, you know, I won't say that we were, you know, I was one of the first uh, or the first to do it, but definitely among some of the first to really start taking hold of, you know, that opportunity that, you know, places like Blog Talk Radio offered. And and I think one of the, the real things that was kind of different about Blog Talk is it was it was live. You could actually do a live show. It wasn't you didn't have to pre-record it and upload it and, you know, ask people to go download it. You could broadcast live. So anything could happen. And, of course, anything did happen on the show. And on Blog Talk Radio at the time um, when I left Blog Talk, it was uh, – I think we were the one of the top five shows at that, at that time. So we were doing really well. We had a good audience. Anybody could do a show. And uh, they, yes. they gave you X amount of hours, but now it's completely different. I was watching out this week. You can only have – 15 minutes of live show now or even get a half oh, hour wow. a week and I just am like how in the world does anybody have a show with that much with, with like like yeah. what can you get done in 15 minutes unless it's like hey everybody go check out my radio show enjoy <laughs> like, right. I think when we done it you could do gosh was it, was it an hour I think now you could do an hour, but then you had to reset, and I think you could go again. Some I can't remember exactly right. how it all worked, but now we did force them to change up how they how they handled things like that because of the twenty four hour broadcast. Our first twenty four hour broadcast made them completely rethink their format because they had no way to let us stream twenty four hours straight, and they were like, well, "We're not sure what we we're going to do," and I, I, they had a whole group of techs on standby for us during this whole 24-hour broadcast right. to make and, sure they went right. Right. Now, if I may, that was when you broadcast from the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum in Florida. and That, that was the second and third one. The first one was from Wilkesboro, North Carolina, and we broadcast from the Haunted Smithy Hotel. Okay. and mm-hmm. And basically, this was like, again, your goal was just basically kind of just to celebrate everything that you had done. No, that sounds like, sounds, I, I don't mean that as, uh, as arrogant, but that was just basically to celebrate the first, it, it was there. Yeah, to, it was the first year. Yeah, it was to celebrate the first year, and you just kind of mm-hmm. had anybody that you became buddies with that made for interesting shows. Exactly. You were like, yeah. hey, come, let's, let's, 
hold down and everything. So now in that time, was there a particular genre? And that's how I'm going to call this. Like if you're a Bigfoot hunter, that's one genre. UFO hunter, that's right. another. A ghost one, another. A cryptozoologist, another. Was there a particular genre that you found yourself gravitating towards like boy i wish i could have more of these guys in or i wish i had more of that going on i won't say there was a particular one that i would gravitate towards and wish i could have done it more because my interests are, are very versatile i mean it's all over the place and and the show really reflected what i was interested in but there was definitely one topic that i always loved talking about and it was NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. Not technically creepy or scary, but when you really look into it, yeah, it is scary. And I loved talking about NLP, which kind of, you know, tacks on to hypnosis and things along those lines. Right. What exactly is NLP? Because i got to be honest, I this is the first time I'm hearing that. Um, not that I, like, or honestly, I've never heard of it before and I'm not familiar with it. It it basically is tricking the mind, and um, marketing uses NLP. Um, a, a great example, I, I will swear up and down that Barack Obama or his speechwriters were well-versed in NLP, that yes, we can. That whole thing is NLP. It's just – it's conditioning the mind to do what you want it to do. Um, there's a great show, and he's a hypnos. Uh, 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 he does hypnosis and and really specializes in LP. And I, what was his name? Darren Brown. He was from the UK, I want to say. And he had a show where he would do a lot of stuff with it. And it it is scary. I mean, you're talking about like where. He would do things like going to a store and buy a piece of jewelry, and it's kind of breaking the subconscious, right? And he would pay with blank bills. It'd just be white pieces of paper, but the person on the other side would see money. And now I'm sure with any other reality show, a lot of it was scripted, but NLP is a real thing. Right. Um, and, right. and, you know, all kinds of your major brands use it. It's why you go to the store and buy Tide, you know, instead of some off brand. It's because it's in your mind. It's what you see all the time. You've been programmed to think Tide, you know? Right. Right. Oh, that's interesting cuz you know what that reminds me of is about a week ago I saw a um I watched a whole uh I'm going to give a shout out to one of my favorite YouTube channels called The Company Man. And it basically goes into the history of brands. So, like, mm -hmm. if you were – like, he goes into the history of Hershey's. He goes into the history of, like, pretty much whatever you see as, like, a brand name. Like, here's what happened with this company and why we see it today. Or why is this department store no longer what it is? Mm -hmm. And he goes into the history of it. And he did this whole thing about the history of um, – about the history of um, Arby's. And and I'll be darned if that afternoon I didn't go and get myself a chicken sandwich from <laughs> Arby's because of that. So it almost not that, exactly. he was, not that he was a part of that or that he did that on purpose, but the brand kind of stuck in my head. And, That's it. That's a simple example. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, where it's just kind of like, oh, okay, well, hey, Domino's. And then when you see the word Domino's, something comes into your brain. Gotcha. Yeah. Now, and then that's what makes it so scary is we don't realize how programmable we are. And, mm. you know, when you really start looking into things like NLP and you start looking around, it's all around you. It's everywhere. Right. Right. And it's kind of like you'll see that with, like, particular artists that you – that these are the people you should be – paying attention to music wise these are the shows mm -hmm. you should be watching these are the exactly. sports teams you should be liking so now when you walk away from the nlp and other stuff like that um kind of again because shadows had so many amazing guests uh and i was always i loved the ghost hunters those were always my favorite <laughs> yeah did you ever walk away with like okay here is what my belief is before this and here is what my belief is 
after the fact. Did you, did, did any of these guests ever make you rethink what your beliefs were, or did you just kind of get on there and go, okay, I'm going to give you guys a platform. All I ask is an interesting show so that my listeners are enjoying this. How did you, like, did, was there anything that ever made you think? Yeah, yeah, that's a, you know, well, that's a really good question. I don't think anybody has ever asked me about the show in, in that regards, if, if it did do anything like that. And, and it's tough to answer because I'm a, I consider myself a believer in possibility. So I tend, I won't say I believe in everything, but I believe in the possibility of it. So, you know, getting on, I never had to ask anybody. We really, I'm going to just give this to you. Just give me a good show because I had a genuine interest in what they were saying anyway. Right. And so, you know, it was, I was always able to get really involved with the show. And of course I, you know, as well at the time I was doing ghost hunting myself and spending nights in haunted houses and looking up at the sky for UFOs and you know, all that. So it was already an interest of mine. So I won't say anybody really changed my beliefs, but it definitely expanded. I, I will definitely say that expanded my beliefs into you know, looking at something maybe slightly different or maybe a way to approach, um, you know, going into a haunted house. And Robert Schneck is actually a great example of that because me and him discussed a lot about um, going into a haunted house or a place that is supposedly haunted with a different kind of attitude, a positive attitude, and being more upbeat and, you know, asking questions that weren't like, why did you shoot yourself? I mean, if you were a ghost, why would you want to, you know, why do you want to bring that up? So it was more of like, Hey, we're going to sit here and have a conversation. You are more than welcome to join and be a part of this conversation. And I did employ that in a few places that I went with awesome results too. So yeah, it was, you know, there was more of an expansion than say changing my beliefs. It was just, you know, making them wind them out and seeing, okay, let's try something a little different to see what happens. Right. Right. Now, do, are you still in touch with any of these people today? Like I know that you right beforehand, we were talking about how you'll like, uh, you, you have friends on Facebook that you'll like, and you'll talk with. And, and obviously life, life has gotten in the way, not just for you, but for a lot of people in so many different ways that you're not able to continue doing whatever it is that uh, that you did 10 years ago. But um, are you still in touch with any of these people? I, I would have to say, unfortunately, not a whole lot. Now, Robert, um, me and him stay in contact off and on. Is He's probably about the only one. Um, I think Gary Frick, me and him maybe have messaged each other a couple of times over the last couple of years. I know me and you have a few times. Right. And that's really been about the gist of it, uh, you know, but I do kind of stalk people on Facebook and just see what's going on and see how they're doing, you know, stuff like that. Just, um, and you can't help it. I mean, you know, the world's out there on the whole digital platform anymore. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of them I miss talking to. Now I will say the Jackal, um, I actually did an interview with the Jackal not too long ago, uh, maybe about a month ago. Angel Espino is an absolutely yes. fantastic human being. I, mm -hmm. I, he is hilarious. Him and I go back and forth probably several times a week on, in, um, uh, in our messages and stuff like that. And him and I share a common interest that I don't want to say because it will get me booted all out of some place. <laughs> but, um, but he, he's someone that has really kept his, he kept, he's kept waving the flags of personal belief and everything. Yes. And he, yeah. And he's, yeah, he's, he's just such a nice guy. Um, wow, I'm getting a lot of people that I'm going to be doing shout outs to in this episode, Robert Schneck. I know. I mean, this, this brings up a lot of memories for myself. I mean, it's been a while since the show has aired, and I still get messages and, or emails to this day where people are like, hey, when's the next show? And I'm like, this show hadn't aired for years. Right. Um, so there's not a next show, but you're more than welcome to dig up all the you know, the recorded broadcast that's all over the internet. You're more than right, welcome right. to Right, right. Now, I'm going to go a little inside baseball here and one of the things that that I think probably the most dangerous thing that blog talk radio had was the live chat room oh my goodness <laughs> it 
Robert and I would go, no. who could make Jeremiah crack? That was what no. we would do. You would just be sitting there. There'd be somebody just going, well, when I wrote my book, I had this experience that showed me that the universe was bright and wonderful. And then there'd be Captain Bugface going, have you ever <laughs> have you asked them if they've ever killed a man before? And then I'd be like, ask them if they've ever had a gay experience before. And not. Oh, man. And, and, Sometimes the chat room was more entertaining than the show itself. <laughs> oh my gosh! And but the thing was, is that dang it, man, you held true. You held true the entire time that happened. You just bit your tongue, and every so often, I could hear you go, <clears throat> "Okay." <laughs> It was, and even when we left Blog Talk, we still kept the chat room um, as part of the show. I mean, it always had a chat room. Um, yeah. It was just that interaction with our listeners was, was just such a big thing. I mean, because you got a lot of stuff. I mean, you got the comments, you got questions, um, uh, you know, so it, it was just part of the show. I mean, if we would have left and, and took off the chat room, I don't think the, the show would have been as popular as it was. Really? Because I was actually about to ask that because, like, you must have had – on a given night, a couple hundred listeners, but then mm-hmm. you must have had several thousand downloads of an episode. Am I correct on that? Oh, man. Some of our downloads seriously reached 100,000 plus downloads. Oh, no kidding. They really did. I wish I would have monetized. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that was the other yeah. thing was towards the end of it. That's when Patreon actually became a thing. Because, mm-hmm. like, if I remember correctly, the goal was, okay, we're going to get sponsors like traditional radio. Yeah, we did try to do that, and and every once in a while we would pick some things up, but I I mean, I guess the genre, you know, the the stuff that we were covering, a lot of people tend to stay away from, especially anybody who's willing to drop a decent amount of money. Um, So we never really got into getting the show monetized in any aspect, but it didn't matter, you know, I mean, I was, I loved it. I I miss it to this day, and, and I still think about bringing it back, and there's been times I have almost been talked into it. Yeah, because i got to flat out tell you that ultimately that that's what it was. Now, mm-hmm. um, you ultimately changed the format of the show, and it switched from Shadows in the Dark to Jeremiah Greer Live because you wanted to focus in more on, like, say, interesting people that you met uh, specifically, mm-hmm. like, in your neck of the woods and everything. And, yeah, exactly. And, and it just kind of was like – and then you, like – would switch it from one time to another to another and then eventually you just it just I got the feeling it just stopped being fun for you well now I'll be absolutely honest it never stopped being fun the show did end because I went through a divorce and you know life changes and I I I didn't want to get on the show and not be myself not be have that genuine interest because i mean when you go through something like that your interest it it does take a dip you know it's not as fun and the other thing about it was when we switched to the new format we did focus on a lot more local stuff and at that time i was living near Asheville, and Asheville, north carolina and Asheville had a lot going on and it got aggravating just going out on on for a night on the town to go catch a show i would go to a show and a music show watch a band and i would have i don't know how many people come up to me you know oh i want to be on the show or you know that was i mean just it was constant you know i mean minor fame i guess and it was like oh i just want to get here and enjoy my night you know please let me just chill have a drink and enjoy the show right so it got to where we you know i was getting bugged a lot and i did bring on a co-host um which was tough for me because i'd always done the show uh, pretty much myself now we had guest co-hosts who would come on via skype right. or you know round tables but i had a you know a every show co-host and that was kind of tough because we kind of had our differences on how we wanted to take the show how to handle marketing of the show and things like that and that was also part of the the drag down of the show Right, right. Well, I mean, nowadays, I got to flat out tell you, I found I I would not be doing what I'm doing now if I had not found Anchor.fm, uh, which mm-hmm. basically hosts, and it's basically, as of now, I'm sure that these things will shift as need be, you can pretty much host unlimited episodes type of thing. And it's really, 
really it's it's very user friendly and that was one of the things that I did like about back in the day of um of uh of um Blog Talk Radio was it was very user friendly back in the day yeah. but then the, everything has to shift and it has to become more and more complicated than it needs to be and um if you want proof of that, take a look at the music player from your iPhone and how it went really, really easy like six years ago. And then all of a sudden it, it just now it's like you have to have a degree in in computer electronics to understand <laughs> right. how to just how do I repeat the song or something mm-hmm. stupid like that. So, I mean, like everything shifts, but I got to tell you, a big reason why I'm doing this is because of this Anchor FM, and I've been very pleased with how it's turned out, and then just, it was it was like, this is what's pushed me into this, and, and I, I've always held it in the back of my mind. I was like, I would love to do something like what Jeremiah Greer did, but a little bit different and a little bit more manageable with my... Mm-hmm life and everything so that I can make it <laughs> right. so that I can do it in a way that is not because like you you held on to that commitment and you did an amazing job keeping that as committed as you possibly can so. oh man that was so tough to I will not lie um, because I mean I had nobody else so I was you know booking the show researching it engineering hosting I did all my graphic design work I did all the web design work uh, you know, we ran, uh, I ran two computers it took to do my show after I left Blog Talk and mm-hmm. kind of went out on my own. Um, I had two computers set up. One was um, to run uh, Sam Broadcaster. One was for my Skype. I had to figure out how to connect the two together so that the Skype audio would come through to, you know, the the show uh, stream. I, I mean, it was crazy. And what was this? I started off like an hour, one show, an hour a week. And then at one point I was doing two. Then I did like a, well, did I get up to a four or three hour show twice a week at one time? I, I mean, I was going all in. Right, right. Do you think that if you were to do that again, you could set up in a word that I learned in the last couple of years that I hold on tight to and I love to death is, is a r- word called boundaries do you think that if you were to put some boundaries in place where you say i'm only going to put this at this time and this at that time that that would probably help out if you were to want to do a show again Uh, absolutely and i would have to because i'm an all-in kind of person when i go to do something i'm going to try to do it my best and even better than my best and and it is I, you know, maybe a flaw, um, but at the same time, you know, I think that's what it does sometimes take to succeed. Uh, and I would have to set some kind of boundaries. Like, I am only going to do one hour a week. That's it. Don't look at doing more shows. One guest, not four guests. You know, right, <laughs> you know I mean? right, right. Because it's tough. You know, a simple website just to say is coming up. Because I mean, I put a lot into even like the graphics for the show. Like, if somebody was coming up, you know, they had a big banner. Um, on the website and it was done as the best I could do it. It would rotate with other banners and, you know, every show was recorded and uploaded to the website. Yeah. Cause I gotta be honest. That's one of the things that I did when I, when I did this, I said, I'm going to keep this as simple as I possibly can because I have learned in life that boundaries are a very good thing. I mean, what, what's that phrase? Good fences make for good neighbors. And, <laughs> right. and sometimes you have to put boundaries on yourself and that's one of the things I've learned about myself is if I don't do it at this time and only do it from here to here then things then things get out of hand and I get uh, like and I have a very obsessive personality and my poor wife who yeah. um, I've always said I constantly I've married up she has to put <laughs> up with a lot and I and I don't want to add to her add to the trauma of already being married to me, which I sound like I'm throwing myself under the bus, but I'm really not. It takes a very (laughs) special person to be married to me. And um, (laughs) she just shouted, it does. um, (laughs) Well, yeah, and that would be, I'm absolutely 100% agreement with you that that would be one of the biggest 
Um, things I could say to somebody who's thinking about getting into this is make sure to, to set your boundaries and not do too much because they're at the end of the show as another part of it. I mean, like I said, it was multifaceted as to why the show kind of ended. Yeah. You know, that was also part of it. it was just I had just exhausted myself in putting so much into it. And, and granted, it did great. I mean, I, I will never complain about how well the show done and all the people that I got to meet through it and all the experiences I got there. I mean, you know, two 24 hour broadcasts hanging out in the Ripley's museum is, I mean, that's just awesome, but you do have to set some boundaries or are you just going to, you're going to lose interest in it. And if it's something that you have a lot of passion for, that's sad to see that interest lost because you just went too much, went too hard. Right. No, I understand. I understand. Well, Jeremiah, I'm going to put up a boundary right here because I think our time is coming to an end, but I'm going to, I'm going to do something. I'm going to completely put you on the spot. If you come across something or someone that you find incredibly interesting and you go, I would love to do an interview with that person. I wish I could do just know you have an open door to guest host for this podcast if you ever want to take it this is not one of these things where you need to go uh don i don't know if i can like this just know that you have an open door and you ever go i would love to do an interview with this person i wish i had the format for it keep it very simple you come in do the interview with whoever it is i'll give you access to the website and then you can go back to you could go back to um, playing uh, music quietly in your local area and no one needs to hear from you for six or seven months. But I just want you to know that you always have an open door here for whatever you want and anything you want to promote. Well, I, I want to say I greatly appreciate that. And, you know, as you said at the, the top of the, the show that – you know, about being one who got, you know, I guess inspired you to do things like this. I mean, I've got that from many other hosts that I've had on the show, been a part of, and you guys humble. I am so humbled by that. Um, and that means a lot to me to know that the show had that kind of impression on people just beyond, you know, beyond what we had as topics on the show, but what it did for other people as well to, you know, have the courage to flick on that switch and, and talk about their interest and what they have a passion for. Right. I love it. Exactly. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you exactly how I discovered your show. And I just remembered I had, um, I had been working as a newspaper reporter in 2008 and I ended up, uh, the job came to an end when a whole bunch of other newspaper jobs came to an end. And I was working in a, um, I was working, I got a job doing data entry and they were it was just it was really a just you just sit there and you just type things in but i had access to the internet i had high speed internet because at that time i'd only had um i'd only had dial up and i could never listen to a radio show or download anything like that because the connection was always so slow mm -hmm. and then i was kind of like you know yeah i was like I'm interested in that Art Bell stuff. See if I can find that. And I, I typed in like I go like, like, paranormal ghosts hunting and stuff like that. And your show came up in the Google search, and I went through it and I listened to an episode. And that's how I'm. Um, and I think probably one of my personal favorite episodes was you interviewing Jan. I'm gonna get his name wrong. Jan Henderson. Mm -hmm. who wrote several books about the life of George Reeves, the yes, guy who yes. played Superman, and he actually became a buddy because that of your show. That was a good show. Yeah, and uh, I grant that I haven't interviewed that guy in years, but oh. he was such a nice guy. I should actually add him to my topics of people. Yeah, but, he was he was very nice. I like that. I like that show. Yeah, and it was so interesting and to hear his theory about it and to hear mm -hmm. his take on the different – on his uh, – on the theories of why he thought of how George Reeves died and what he ultimately, I don't think he ever spelled it out, but he kind of alluded to what his personal thoughts were. And yes. What, what made sense. Like he, like he wasn't like saying like, yeah, Hollywood hit me and came in and shot George Reeves. No, right. it wasn't like he said that he kind of 
goes, well, do you think this, this? And I actually wrote a really, really good series of articles because of him, and it was really a very positive experience, and I enjoyed that. So, mm-hmm. so but anyway, Jeremiah, I do hope you get back into the saddle of things just very <laughs> briefly. You know what I mean? It's like kind of like, you know, it's one of those one of those action movies where the hero, like James Bond goes, you know what? I've been out of the business for a number of years. And then he gets called back in that one last time to help out that, at that last moment, just to show that he still has it in him. And I really hope you, I hope you do something like that. And it does like we see something. And so that's why I'm saying, please come host the show. I'll even throw a- <laughs> it. Might, it might just happen. It, I, I'll be honest. The pool gets stronger and stronger every day. And especially when I get to do things like this and, you know, remembering how much I did enjoy it. I mean, it was a major part of my life. Yeah. Well, let me ask this. Would you ever consider co-hosting with me on an episode? If I were to say, Jeremiah, this guy's great. Come in, come in join me with this would you ever consider doing that absolutely yeah absolutely i'm always game to co-host or be a guest or just ramble on you know because honestly i don't have to do all the legwork right right exactly (laughs) so so yeah anytime you want me to co-host you just let me know and if i'm available you can count me in awesome Jeremiah, is there a place where people can see your um, work? Like, uh, do, you, do you still have a website? Do you have, like, um, is your music up someplace? And where can where can people find old episodes of Shadows in the Dark? Oh, man, old episodes. You can find a few on YouTube where guests have posted. Um, one day I really need to put all the episodes up. Uh, I don't really have a specific place. My music, I do, I don't post anything. I haven't recently, music-wise. I do need to get some things up there. But Jay Greer Music is a YouTube page. It does have about six or seven songs on it. Um, other than that, I really don't have anything going on that's, say, promotable. Um, I do have a vintage store on Etsy called Almost Unused. Um, I like the Dylan you know, nostalgic items. So if you, you know, you like your childhood memories brought back up, it's a great place to visit. It brings mine up all the time. One of the reasons I got into it. So very cool. That, yeah. Very cool. Well, I'll put it to you this way. We'll have link, links to both of those when we post this. So people can awesome. see where, or see where your stuff is. Jeremiah, thank you so much for being a guest tonight. I really do appreciate it. Oh, I really appreciate it. Thank you, saying It was so great to reconnect again. It really was. So, so anyway. Well, listen, everyone, thank you so much for uh, joining us tonight, and I hope you have a great night, and thanks for listening.